A beautiful good evening, everybody. My name is Reiner. This is my channel, Rainier Books. Tonight, it's time for the last time in 2020 to present you a couple of books that I curated, that I found in the publications of December that I think are interesting to me and maybe and hopefully also interesting to you. So let's get started. So this is the last time, the last time I'm going to present a new books in 2020. My channel started in 2020 in May and from the month of June onwards I have presented to you new books in June, July, August, September, October, November and December. In total we will end up with 40 books of 2020 that I recommended in this segment of my channel. And four of the books are coming in December. December is not usually, I think, a month where a lot of super interesting books come out and get published because I think the industry um, is uh, more putting its efforts on November and putting out the most important books that are supposed to be the great sellers for Christmas uh, in November. And of course, the greatest book of them all this year is Barack Obama and his autobiography, Promised Land, A Promised Land, that was published on November 17. And even the Booker Prize and the National Book Award changed its days of announcing the prizes in order not to interfere with uh, the publication of Barack Obama's book, uh, A Promised Land. And if you have watched television in the United States, in your own country, wherever you are, uh, outside the US, um, you could not avoid to see Barack Obama. Not that I dislike the guy, he's a great guy, I like him, but he was on every channel, on every show, and did a lot of great marketing for his book. He's gonna be a rich man, and, um, well, he already is, probably. So, let's get started now with the books of December. I have four books only on my list, as I told you. The first one is uh, a nonfiction book by, um, Idioma Oluo, and it's called The Dangerous Legacy of White Male America. Idioma Oluo is an American journalist and writer who has probably um, come into your mind already if you have started educating yourself about racism um, and the black and white issues in the United States uh, with uh, her book, um, So You Want to Talk About Race. That was a great success, and now it's The Dangerous Legacy of White Male America by Ifeoma, who were published on December 1 already by Seal Press. What happens to a country that tells generation after generation of white men that they deserve power? What happens when success is defined by status over women and people of color instead of by actual accomplishments? Through the last 150 years of American history, from the post-reconstruction South and the mythic stories of cowboys in the West, to the present-day controversy of the, over the NFL protests and the backlash against the rise of women in politics, Ijeoma Oluo exposes the devastating consequences of white male supremacy on women, people of color, and white men themselves. Mediocre investigates the real costs of this phenomenon in order to imagine a new white male identity, one free from racism and sexism. As provocative as it is essential, this book will upend everything you thought you knew about American identity and offers a bold new vision of American greatness. The second book that I want to talk about is a book that, I, that is written by a fellow German of mine, an author from Greifswald from Eastern Germany. She was born there 40 years ago and her name is Judith Shalansky. Um, she's um, both a writer, a book designer, and a publisher. And her newest book that is translated into the English language is called An Inventory of Losses, translated from the German by Jackie Smith, published on December 8, next week, by New Directions. Each disparate object described in this book, a Caspar David Friedrich painting, a species of tiger, a villa in Rome, a Greek love poem, an island in the Pacific shares a common fate. It no longer exists, except as the dead end of a paper trail. Recalling the works of Vigi Sebald, 
Bruce Chatwin or Rebecca Zolnit, an inventory of losses is a beautiful evocation of 12 specific treasures that have been lost to the world forever. And taken as a whole, opens mesmerizing new vistas of how we can think about extinction and loss. With meticulous research and a vivid awareness of why we should care about these losses, Judith Charlansky, the acclaimed author of Atlas of Remote Islands, lets these objects speak for themselves. She ventriloquizes the tone of other sources, burrows into the language of contemporaneous accounts and deeply interrogates the very notion of memory. I'm sure this is a great book. I have um, had great pleasure a couple of years ago when she published her Atlas of Remote Islands. I think it's called Atlas der Vergessenen Inseln in German, in the German original version, where she both has drawn um, the maps of islands that are uh, very remote and very difficult to reach on this planet. And she has written also beautiful texts about those islands in Atlas of Remote Islands. I really can recommend that to you because last year, I think over the holidays, I was sitting here at home with not much to do. And uh, whenever I had the opportunity, I was watching documentaries on YouTube our beloved channel, uh, the whole YouTube, I mean. I was watching videos about islands that are extremely remote and you find a lot of them in this book and it's so interesting to learn more about this remote island. One of the most remote islands uh, on this planet is Pitcairn Island. Pitcairn is, is, a most, is, a, Pitcairn is actually the most remote island on the planet. It's 3,240 miles, which is 5,215 kilometers from the coast of New Zealand. And there are a couple of um, videos on YouTube that I would recommend you. You can start with Pitcairn and go to other islands. Pit Pitcairn has a population of about 50 people. The Bounty Mutineer, the, the Pitcairn Islanders are a biracial ethnic group descended mostly from nine Bounty Mutineers, the, mut the mutiny on the Bounty, remember? and of Tahitian captive. So this is a very interesting island with a lot of myths and it's so difficult to reach this island. I think uh, I saw a documentary on YouTube where people traveled um, first to New Zealand. As I said, it's 5,200 kilometers from New Zealand to Pitcairn. And then there's another space on in the middle of the Pacific somewhere where you can go in the middle of the um, Indian Ocean. Um, it's in, in the middle of the Pacific, in the Southern Pacific somewhere. You go from New Zealand to um, an island um, that I think belongs to France by plane. And from there, there's a boat that goes once a week and it takes uh, three days to Pitcairn Island. And you have to uh, announce your arrival on Pitcairn to the people of Pitcairn because otherwise they are not so kind and not so um, amazed to see you if you haven't announced your um Coming, but then they are quite kind of nice. And the actual thing, there's a lot of story about uh, sexual misconduct there on, on the island. It's a very interesting story. Um, and um, when if something happens that is uh, that the police has to inquire, then somebody has to come all the way from New Zealand because New Zealand is sort of responsible for the Pitcairn Islands. That still I think is uh, a British overseas territory. That's the far most British territory that still exists on this planet. So that was a long excursion and off topic. And I hope you uh, you bear with me that I wanted to tell it to you because it's so fascinating. It's about a year ago that I actually discovered Pitcairn Island. I, I will never go there. I don't have plans, but it's really uh, an interesting story. And there are many other islands. And Judith Chalansky, thank you, Judith, if you're watching this, you reminded me of all this. And your new book or her new book uh, Rudy Shansky's new book, uh, An Inventory of Losses, goes into a little bit of into the same direction. We have remote islands on that book of Atlas der Vergessenen Inseln, and we have Inventory of Losses, which is also um, a book about things that are no longer existing or very remote for us in our memories to reach. So the ideas are, there's a common idea, isn't, isn't it? I am not the guy usually who reads a lot of um, funny stuff, but there's a funny book that I really liked of all the books that were given out that are going to be published in December. And this is Jane Smiley's novel, Perestroika in Paris, that was published on December 1 by Knopf in the United States. 
Uh, Jane Smiley is a winner actually of the Pulitzer Prize. She won it uh, about 20 years ago. And uh, now she is, she's, she's about 71 years old and Perestroika in Paris is her newest book. Paras, short for Perestroika, is a spirited race horse at a racetrack west of Paris. One afternoon at dusk, she finds the door of her stall open and, she's a curious filly, wanders all the way to the city of light. She's dazzled and often mystified by the sights, sounds and smells around her, but she's not afraid. Soon she meets an elegant dog, a German short-haired pointer named Frida, who knows how to get by without attracting the attentions of suspicious Parisians. Paras and Frida coexist for a time in the city's lush green spaces, nourished by Frida's strategic trips to the vegetable market. They keep company with two irrepressible ducks and an opinionated raven, but then Paras meets a human boy, Etienne, and discovers a new, otherworldly part of Paris, the ivy-walled house where the boy and his nearly 100-year-old great-grandmother live in seclusion. As the cold weather and Christmas near, the unlikeliest of friendships bloom. But how long can a runaway horse stay undiscovered in Paris? How long can a boy keep her hidden and all to himself? Jane Smiley's beguiling new novel is itself an adventure that celebrates curiosity, ingenuity, and the, des and the desire of all creatures for true love and freedom. This sounds beautiful, sounds like a Christmas book, this sounds like something to read, over the holidays to escape from this world of COVID-19 and waiting for a vaccine that is not coming as soon as we have hoped for, at least not here in Sweden. I could tell you a long story about that, but I'm, I'm going to do that on Sunday, maybe in my weekly wrap up. The last book I want to recommend for new books in December is a thriller. Uh, it's a debut novel, as far as I understand, by uh, a writer of both uh, Swedish and American descent. Uh, her name is Jasmine Imak, and the novel is called her novel is called The Opium Prince, already published on December 1 by Soho Crime. Afghanistan in the 1970s. Born to an American mother and a late Afghan war hero, Daniel Sajadi has spent his life navigating a complex identity. After years in Los Angeles, he is returning home to Kabul at the helm of a U.S. foreign aid agency dedicated to eradicating the poppy fields that feed the world's opiate addiction. But on the drive out of Kabul for an anniversary trip with his wife, Daniel accidentally hits and kills a young Kochi girl named Talaya. He's led off with a nominal fine, in part because nomad tribes are ignored in the eyes of the law, but also because a mysterious witness named Taj Maleki intercedes on his behalf. Wrecked with guilt and visions of Talaya, Daniel begins to unravel, running from his crumbling marriage and escalating threats from Taj, who turns out to be a powerful opium con, willing to go to extremes to save his puppies. This groundbreaking literary thriller reveals the invisible lines between criminal enterprises and political regimes, and one man's search for meaning at the heart of a violent revolution. That was number four or number 40 of all the books that I presented in new books in uh, this time for December. And um, well, tomorrow you will see another video. You will see the third video of In Deep Conversation uh, the, where I have, where I'm talking with Paula from Draw Your Book about uh, the winner of the National Book Award of 2020, Charles Yu, and his book, uh, interior Chinatown. I'm going to ask Paul's questions tomorrow, so stay tuned to that and read Interior Chinatown, because this is a video with spoilers. And on Sunday, you're going to have my weekly wrap-up. I'm still working on um, still working on uh, the five new under 35, the five new authors under 35 that are recommended this year by the National Book Award Foundation. Thank you for watching this video, as I always say to all my wonderful viewers. And if you are new to the channel, if you see this for the first time and you think, hey, this could be something for me, please, please hit the subscribe button down there below. Thank you very much for the for watching this. And as always in 2020, as, as long as we are in danger by this horrible pandemic, I say, wash your hands, wear a mask and stay safe. Bye bye.